Hello everyone, how are you guys? So it was Fisher's birthday on the 9th of March and I really wanted to cover one of his games, uh, especially from this tournament, the Invisonal 1970 Pama de Mallorca which he won with a huge gap of three and a half points. He scored 18 and a half points out of 23 rounds. That's massive. So I thought it would be a great way to remember him. Happy birthday, Fisher. And thank you for your great games and inspiration. Um, so a little bit about this tournament. Uh, six players uh, out of 24 qualified from this tournament to the candidates tournament. Uh, where uh, Fisher first play, uh, faced uh, Mark Taimanov. Uh, he won that match. Then he faced Ben Larson. He won that match as well. Then he faced Tigran Petrosian. He won there as well. Then he faced Horst Pusky in the World Championship match of 1972, which he won and became the World Champion. And fun fact... His opponent in this game, Svetozar Gligoric, actually wrote a book on the Fisher versus Pasky match, uh, which uh, like sold more than like four lakh copies. So I surely urge you to get one as well. Uh, so a little bit about Gligoric is uh, he was one of the world's top players, grandmaster from Serbia and Yugoslavia. He was also a musician uh, and he was also a chess journalist and author. He uh, spoke several languages and he wrote a, his autobiography in 2002, which was uh, named I Play Against Pieces. I haven't read it, but I hope to. So I chose this particular game because... Um, Fisher played the Benoni defense in this game. I love playing the Benoni as black. And I think it's a very interesting opening. And this game was completely wild. So many calculations and lines. I really enjoyed analyzing it and had a headache at the end of it. But I hope I can explain it as well as I can, as well as possible. And you guys can follow it. So let's go. D4, Knight of 6, C4, E6. So the Benoni can be reached with this move order, uh, you know, after knight c3 and c5. Or um, you can play c5 here immediately. I've already made some arrows. And after d5, you play e6. And this would be, then you take on d5, then you play d6 and fianche to your bishop. So this is the basic idea. Fisher actually employed the Benoni defense in four games in uh, this tournament. And very successfully, he uh, scored three and a half out of four. But uh, in one of the games, Rashevsky, uh, his opponent in the second round, played knight f3. And after cd, knight d4, e6, it's now converted into an English opening. So now it's not a pure Benoni. Uh, but in this game, uh, Gligoric went for the pure Benoni after knight c3, c5. This was the sec 22nd round of the tournament, by the way. Uh, so d5, e, d, c, d, d6. And here, uh, as you can see, white has three main moves. One is e4, one is knight f3, and one idea is to fianchet with the bishop with g3 and bishop g2. White played knight f3 here, rook e8. Just a moment, let me, yeah, just wanted to make sure I was recording. Uh, knight f3, uh, g6, e4, bishop g7. So this is like a standard position here. h3 is a move, but white played bishop e2 here. So he allows black to play bishop g4 if he wants to. Black plays castle, castle. And here, uh, bishop g4 is a completely valid move as well. Bobby played rook e8. So a little bit about the Benoni is that um, in the Benoni defense, you basically give up the center, right? I mean, white has center control here. Whereas you are trying to play on the flank with a6 and b5 if possible. You can also try to break the center with f5 if you get a chance. And you're trying to basically play with your pieces. And uh, it's very dynamic and sharp. And uh, also, like, you have to be very alert as black because you have a 
deficient structure if i may say so so it's not a very solid opening definitely can't play for three results you're either playing to win or to lose uh, definitely to win <laughs> hopefully um so um it's it's a lot of fun to play because there are so many tactics and combinations coming in and i really enjoy playing it as black but it's not very popular in the top level because of the nature uh, of the opening you know it's not very solid so the game can go either way and uh, it's actually more commonly plays played in rapid and blitz at the top but uh, I uh, on the other hand started playing it uh, in 2008 when I was a little disappointed with my Kings Indian games and I thought I needed to add something to my repertoire so you know because you also feature to the bishop here so there are some similarities you also play for some attack and everything so I decided to prepare the Benoni and I have, I I really enjoyed I really enjoyed playing Benoni um uh, I also at that time Bugar Gashimov used to play a lot of benoni games at the top level so i really benefited a lot by seeing his games and uh, yes so let's uh, focus on this game now knight d2 uh was played by gregoric and here uh, okay i made a lot of errors uh here fisher had already played uh, two games in this line before this game and he had chosen to develop his knight to a6 so the idea is to go to c7 then play rook b8 and b5 and if white stops it with a4 then you play b6 and you can put your bishop to a6 and there are uh, some ideas like uh, you can also if you get a chance play a6 and b5 so this is a perfectly valid option but in this game uh, fisher played knight b7 which was sort of a surprise for klikovic he must have expected knight a6 and uh, here he played a4 and black decided to centralize his knight with knight e5 so here of course white would love to play f4 and drive away this knight right but f4 here is not such a great move because it allows knight to g4 and then you have this fork coming in with attacking the queen as well as the rook at the same time so let's say knight e2 knight e2 g4 uh white plays uh maybe knight c4 to prevent knight e3 you know guarding the e3 square with the knight and the bishop but then you can take on e4 here so this is a this is a really nice tactic because after knight e4 knight e4 rook e4 bishop into g4 bishop into g4 queen into g4 you have rook into c4 and you are a pawn and let's say white um takes on g4 instead of knight e4 uh you can uh yeah you can here uh give this check and after king h1 there is a very nice tactic uh with bishop into g4 queen into g4 knight f2 forking the king and the queen after rook into f2 and rook e1 backhand checkmate so obviously white can't allow this so this f4 idea does not work in the present position so he decided to play queen c2 you know wants to be more solid cover the e4 pawn uh he could play h3 and then f4 if uh he decides to and here uh white had uh black had some options for example he could have waited here and just played a kamu like a6 uh with the idea to play rook b8 bishop d7 b5 like play slowly and uh, for f4 he still has knight e g4 here the idea being that after knight c4 white has this very very cool tactic with knight e4 once again even though the queen defends the knight after knight into e4 black has bishop d4 check king h1 and here knight into e h2 just wins on the spot because of king h2 and queen h4 checkmate op 
so this was a cool 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 tactic um and uh, he could have opted to go for it but what fisher played is also very interesting and this was this move was the game that uh, this move was the reason why i wanted to show this game because it is a very unusual move usually such a move wouldn't come to your mind guys so maybe you can think uh like a gat matter would say yeah like pause the video and think for 5 minutes uh as to what you would do with black here so what we know here is that white wants to play f4 right so black decided to prevent it with g5 definitely a brave move because you're weakening your king and uh, you have already played g6 one move you're down in development you are a little bit passive and you're choosing to play g5 here and you are also allowing white to create a lot of uh, you know tactics perhaps after like f4 at some point the f file will open up and there might be some tactic coming in on the f file definitely courageous but it's also a very nice idea to remember in the benoni that you can actually go for this move sometimes if the knight is not easily reaching f3 f5 square here which is the square that has been weakened after g5 so he needs like three moves to reach here and also the e4 pawn becomes weak if he does this so he has to be careful and you also get get time to play knight g6 and knight f4 so you have your own knight coming to f4 here if white gives you time so this is definitely a cool move to consider if you get a chance white played knight f3 here knight into f3 bishop f3 and now the g5 pawn is hanging so white play, uh, black played h6 bishop d2 a6 now he's playing for b5 with bishop d7 and rook b8 so in benoni uh, as i mentioned before it's very important to take a break somewhere either break b5 or f5 at least otherwise you'll be doomed to passive passivity and you don't want that you want to be active and fight for counter play so bishop e2 grigorich played uh and fisher played queen e7 here he has already i guess seen the idea that he wants to go for rook a e1 and here again like here again he had a few options like um there was this move like knight g4 with the idea to go knight e5 and uh, for example for knight g4 white cannot play f4 here because of bishop d4 and king h1 and knight f2 so let's say white would have played h3 instead for knight g4 sorry h3 instead you can simply go knight e5 f4 pawn into pawn and uh, knight is like really well placed on e5 actually and um it's it's not really a problem for black i mean even though his king is slightly weak the knight is super well placed on e5 if it had been on f6 instead then white would have been better in this position but since it is on e5 it can go to knight g6 as well so white is uh, black is doing really fine here so this was definitely possible but instead fisher played queen to e5 which is actually very interesting but um it uh the evaluation here according to engine is a uh, clear advantage for white and glicorich even found the move actually there are so many crazy variations here and to analyze it uh was very very difficult um uh, initially because uh, i mean i really don't know how the players were able how much time they took during the game because it took me so long to analyze this position and then to check with the engine oh my god it's a really difficult position and you have to take a lot of decisions here for example here white played king h1 but you can actually even consider playing f4 directly and there is a very subtle difference between the two um so 
let's say white place f4 directly here here we have an option of playing queen d4 king h1 and g4 which would have been available in the game as well but for f4 we can also take on f4 and after bishop f4 bishop f4 does not give white an advantage guys can you believe it because after queen d4 king h1 knight e4 bishop f3 pinning the knight you simply go back knight f6 support the rook and black is fine but instead of bishop f4 there is a move like rook f4 with the idea to double on the f file keep pressure on the f7 pawn and tie down black's pieces and this would have given white a big advantage um, so let's say bishop d7 here and um, i mean the idea is to simply play b5 and just break open the position so let's say white plays rook e f1 then you play b5 anyway a into b5 a into b5 bishop b5 bishop b5 knight b5 knight e4 there was this really really crazy um and long combination which i wanted to show rook into f7 queen b2 queen into b2 bishop into b2 bishop into h6 and this position believe it or not is better for black because of the coup of the very strong c pawn and the knight on e4 so rook b8 now the knight is like doesn't have many squares to go he goes to c7 you give a check white plays king h1 and you simply play rook e8 with the idea to play rook b7 and you also have knight f2 coming in and you have this really strong pawn on c5 so this position is actually better for black this is all forced so it would have been better for white to prevent black from playing b5 and this is actually the crux of benoni like if white can prevent black from employing his main ideas then white will be better because he's structurally better but it's very hard to do it and you know if you apply prophylaxis too often then sometimes you simply miss your chance to win the game and you sometimes become very passive as well so it is a delicate balance that you need to maintain here a5 would have been strong and uh, this would have been like a um, good game um, but um white white definitely has an advantage because um black's pieces are not really moving and he doesn't have much um to do he doesn't have uh like targets in this position and that is black's main problem so um f4 would have been an interesting idea here but king h1 is actually even stronger with the idea to play f4 so white basically is threatening f4 here and black decided to play queen d4 so that f4 doesn't come with uh, like attacking the queen and white black has the option to play g4 in reply here actually white decided to play f3 and it is an understandable decision because after f4 the tactics are crazy but also the thing is that if white wants to claim an advantage or play for an advantage he had to play f4 in this position because um you need to break open the position in order to show black that he is lagging behind in development and this is the way only way to take advantage so um another option by the way was to play bishop e3 first and then play f4 this was also possible and uh, we will get to this line in a bit but let's check f4 first so for f4 there were some uh crazy options like knight g4 bishop into g4 bishop g4 f into g4 
h into g5, bishop g5, bishop h5 with the idea to play bishop g6. And here, white has a nice move like h4. Um, this is basically like big advantage for white. This position, he's a pawn up. Um, his king is sort of safer than the black king, and his pieces are quite well placed. So this would have been uh, definitely advantageous. Uh, another uh, possibility instead of h4 was queen c1, bishop g6, and queen f4. Actually, it's an even better way to play because you're targeting, and your queen is much better on f4 than on c2, which was just being a defender, whereas here it defends as well as attacks. So, yeah, this was um, quite strong. So, knight g4 is not so great. Um, of course, you need to consider g into f4 here. And again, the best move is rook f4. Here, bishop d7, rook f1, doubling on the f file. But this knight is still protected. So, black can play something like rook ab8 here. Um, and here white had a cool idea like bishop to e1 and bishop to h4. So these are really cool and difficult to spot ideas and you probably will get them only after you reach this position. It's hard to see them from afar unless you have studied a lot of model games and you have seen these tactics. So then they sort of get um, ingrained in your muscle memory. So this was also quite possible and uh, white can fight for an advantage here. Another option was instead of gf4, black plays g4. For g4, white plays, um, <laughs> white has a move like e5 here. fd into e5, f e5 rook e5 and here after rook f4 the queen is completely trapped so white black has to play bishop f5 attacking the queen rook into f5 rook into f5 queen f5 allows queen into d2 and black is okay so white moves the queen to c1 and still the queen is under attack so bishop e4 blocking the uh, attack but now Already bishop g4 gives white a big advantage. Uh, the bishop is twice attacked. Knight into g4, rook into g4. The bishop is still attacked. Rook a8. Your idea is to take on g2 and then perhaps... Um, no, not immediately. No, right now the tactic doesn't work. But yeah, you you this tactic is in the air, right? Like at some point, like bishop g2 and rook into e4. But uh, your engine gave like a move like rook d1. And this is already a huge advantage for white. So um, there was a crazy, crazy end to this line, which I would like to show. Uh, rook h5 with the idea of queen e5 here and protecting h6. You're not exactly protecting it because this bishop is pinned and the bishop is supported with the queen. So you play queen e5 anyway because now your queen is attacked. Queen e5, you're threatening mate on h2. And why does a move like h4 here? Okay. I think these moves, these kind of variations are just to be um, seen and enjoyed because it's very hard to obviously fully calculate them and there are so many ways to go wrong, so many... Um, points where you can simply go wrong in these lines. So after h4, you have defended the mate on h2 and you have blocked the rook and you have like limited his possibilities now and you are now threatening bishop into g7. By the way, here rook g7 would not have worked because black simply goes king h8 and now you are threatening queen into h2. You can't play g3 because the pawn is pinned. You can't play h3 because rook into h3 and the pawn is pinned. 
So the only um, move here you can say is queen f4, but then queen into f4, bishop f4, and king into g7, and you are in exchange up as black, and black is the one who's playing for an advantage now. So rook g7 would not have worked. Instead, white has this move like h4, bishop g6, bishop into g7, king into g7. And here there are many good options, but the simplest is to go into the end game because white is a pawn up. So queen f4 and go into the end game, exchange queens and be happy with your d pass pawn, roll it up all the way down to the 8th rank and make a queen. <laughs> So um, this this would have give, given White a good advantageous end game, <laughs> very hard line for sure, and it shows how complex and difficult chess is. I mean, unbelievably um, difficult and complicated lines, but had a lot of fun analyzing them and wanted to show them. Um, so uh, basically, f4 was the way to go and black would have had to choose between gf4 and knight g4 and g4. He probably would have gone for g4, otherwise why did he play queen d4, right? Like, he could have kept the queen on. Yeah. Another reason he could have played queen d4 is because after f4, gf4, bishop f4, now the queen is not attacked. So he gets an extra move and he can simply take on e4. So that's that's there as well. So maybe that also could have been a possibility. And this line could have also been seen. And one more line which I wanted to show was bishop to e3, which is also interesting. Because now you move your, uh, like, you have to move your queen to b4. This is the only move. And for f4, there are all these lines with uh, knight e4. And uh, uh, this line might not work very well um, because of bishop d3, queen d5, fg5, rook e3, uh, rook e3, and now white is threatening bishop c4, so bishop e6. Um, but then white has g to h6, bishop h6, rook g3, king f8, and now just a very cool move like this one keeping the attack on f7 and this is really really strong it's a really strong position um but instead of um uh, all this uh black had a very cool option as well like bishop f5 here <laughs> pinning the um, because the e4, e pawn is pinned and after ef5 you have rook into e3 so this would have Again, been very complicated, and uh, he he could have gone for this for sure. Instead, um, sorry, let's go back to the game. Instead, White decided to be more positional, and he played f three. Mm. Uh, but now, like Black is okay. Black played. Uh, so so this is. This is really cool, you know, like basically uh, after f3, white has made some sort of a concession and we need to think like, what is it? He's defending the e4 pawn, but he has also like decided that he's not going to play bishop e3 on the next because now it hangs. It doesn't, And he has also blocked the path of his bishop. So suddenly the h5 square is available for the knight and he can go to f4 and Fisher spots it immediately. And he goes knight h5 here. Like, super alert. This is what I mean by, you know, you need to be really alert in Benoni. And like for each move uh, that your opponent plays, he perhaps also makes some concession. And you need to be alert and find what is the concession that he made and how can I take advantage of it. Here, White decided to go for a tactic. But instead of that, he had a very, very cool and positional move here which was knight to d1. Sorry. He played, sorry, I showed the game, a uh, move in the game. But there was a move like knight into d1. Sorry, not knight into. He's not taking anything. Just the knight goes to d1. 
and uh, the idea is that first of all the night on d1 supports b2 but the main idea is that you want to play bishop c3 here and exchange this really strong annoying dark squared bishop which has annoyed you for the rest all all your life so far and will annoy you for the rest of the game so you simply exchange it then you bring your knight to e3 then you bring your knight to f5 you put your uh, pieces on good squares and um, play the game you can also put it on c4 by the way so uh, and, and right now by the way white is threatening to trap the queen after bishop c3 like queen bishop c3 and the queen is trapped here she has nowhere to go so for knight d1 black has a move like bishop d7 so that after bishop c3 you can take on a4 with the queen and um, um, it, yeah, this is possible. And uh, for bishop d7, there are a number of options. One option, this is the main line, bishop to c4. Uh, sorry, this is not the main line. Bishop to c4 simply allows b5, so this is okay. Um, there was a move like... Uh, b3 here which i had a look at but then black can play c4 and now he has this square on c5 and this is quite interesting let's say after bishop c4 you simply play b5 and for bishop c3 you play queen c5 so the main move would be a5 actually saving the pawn bishop to a4 and here again there was a very nice line uh, by the way here b3 allows bishop into b3 queen b3 and queen into d2 so this doesn't work queen c1 queen c1 bishop into d1 and here initially the engine showed a big advantage for white after the intermezzo bishop to c3 but then I think black can simply take bishop e2, give up the queen for the sake of a rook, a knight and a pawn. So for example in this position and this is actually very much playable and uh, black could have gone for this position. He has a knight, a rook and a pawn for uh, the queen and he can block the queen with rook e5 next and he can also double on the e file and play f5 at some point and create chances on of his own so i don't think he's really worse here and black can definitely at least hold so this was also an interesting option <laughs> uh, but definitely knight d1 was a cool move to play and uh, let's say like a safe way would have been maybe knight d1, bishop d7, a5, uh, sorry, a5, bishop to a4, queen c1, bishop d1, rook into d1, queen b2, queen b2, bishop into b2, rook b1, bishop d4, rook into b7. And this would have been a normal endgame position. Luckily, black has a break like f5 here because after ef5, rook on e2 uh, is a piece up. And so after the f5 break, black kind of can breathe now, is happy. And uh, he has his chances as well, you know, like let's say f4, bishop 4 and c4, something like this. So... Um, nothing to worry for black, but this was definitely a very cool move to consider knight d1. Instead, Gligorich went for a tactical option of knight to b5. He basically wants to trap this queen, like the queen is very awkward. Like if you see here in this position, uh, if you are able to attack the queen from c3, she has nowhere to go. And so he decides to play knight b5. Uh, with the idea that after a into b5 uh, 
Um, now, after bishop c3, you have queen a4. So, you can't play bishop c3 immediately. You take bishop into e5 and you're attacking the rook. And if the rook moves, you have bishop c3 trapping the queen, which is a very cool idea. But black has queen e5 in between here. And after bishop c3, queen e7, bishop e8, queen e8. This position is quite all right for black as well. No problems. Um, slightly problematic for white only actually because white ha black has two pieces for a rook and um, a pawn. Yeah, that's it. So <clears throat> white played b4 here. Uh, he wants to break open the position and um, you know the uh, activate his. Uh, uh, like you know he has major pieces so he needs files basically for his open files for his pieces um, play queen b2 check queen to e5 queen into b4 black played knight f4 here uh, he's threatening knight d3 so white prevents it with rook d1 yeah here this idea of h5 h4 was quite strong that I've uh, indicated actually it was a very cool idea as well uh, Fisher went for um, b6 here, which is also interesting. Um, idea is to simply develop the bishop, uh, put the knight on d3, you know, activate his pieces. Um, and uh, there were many nice small tactics after queen b6, which I would like to show. So let's say queen into b6, black would have definitely taken rook a4. And here, a move like queen c6 doesn't work, guys. Because of checkmate op after queen b2. And suddenly, <laughs> there's a checkmate coming in on g2. This is the only way to save it for now. But white, black still, black still continues to harass the white king after bishop h3 and after g2 h3 you have rook to a2 and there is a checkmate on h2 which cannot be prevented um by the way here queen into a4 will not work because of bishop g2 checkmate uh I mean, rook g2 and queen g2 <laughs> and game over so this was a very uh well spotted tactic by fisher and uh, that's why queen c6 is a huge blunder in this position. Um, one option was to play g3 here with the idea of diverting the knight so that after knight h3, you can now play queen c6 because now after queen b2, there is no checkmate on g2 and you can simply take the rook. So black has no choice but to go rook a2 here. Queen to c8, knight f2, uh, forking the king and the rook, rook into f2, rook into f2, and now, uh, as you can see, the f3 pawn is hanging. There is no way to really support it. Um, I mean, okay, let's say you play um, queen g4 here, black can even play queen b2 and attack the h2 pawn. So the f3 pawn will surely die and uh, once it's dead, the e4 pawn is also weak and this endgame is actually a little bit difficult for white and um, can't, can't really say that white can hold it. Like for example, let's say I go queen c4 here and you take on f3 and white plays queen e2. Supporting e4 and attacking g4, f3 uh, rook. Um, black has a move like rook to b3, and now he is threatening to come to the second rank. So basically, one of white's problems in this position is the e4 pawn, and the second white problem in white's position is the king, which is quite weak. So since there are two weaknesses in the position, black can actually play for a win here and you know, Fisher had excellent technique, so definitely he had an advantage here. 
but none of this happened none of this happened after b6 white did not take on uh, b6 with the queen he instead played rook f2 here preventing all these tactics along the second rank and threatening queen into b6 on the next move but actually this is a huge blunder because um the last rank is now very weak you know he did not he does not have an escape square here for his king and fisher immediately spotted that knight d3 wins an exchange because after rook d3 queen into a queen to a1 long move <laughs> by the queen and uh, everything is covered and uh, it's checkmate so this was a huge blunder by glikoric and he basically won the exchange and the game after this so the game continued queen into b6 knight f2 queen into f2 rook a4 um sorry he won the piece actually because he had two pieces for a rook and basically um gave up a knight for the rook so now he's left with a whole bishop for a pawn which is nothing for a grandmaster so after king g1 rook a1 now he exchanges pieces so when you're of material it's a good idea to exchange pieces as many as you, as you can so that in the end you have an extra piece and the opponent has just his king after queen e1 he actually did not take on e1 he played rook a2 because now the second rank is also weak queen g3 queen b2 h4 okay perhaps there was like a time scramble and played to k1 and white resign <clears throat> so a really really cool game and there were so many so many nice tactics um in case anyone uh, watching the stream is not clear as to why why it resigned here because i understand a lot of amateurs perhaps watch the stream so basically after rook into e a1 queen into a1 here white would be um whole piece up for a pawn which is a huge difference in material and let's say white plays king h2 you can already play queen e5 and exchange the queens as well so you will be left with the bishop and this position is actually completely lost and so he resigned um yeah i really really enjoyed um analyzing this game and um, really wanted to cover it again uh, happy birthday to fisher uh, as i mentioned in one of my in the in the first video on my channel that uh, fisher's book my 60 memorable games was the only book i owned for the first two years that i played chess and it had a huge impact on my chess style uh, all his games and uh, in general he's contributed so much to chess uh with his uh, games his approach to chess his personality um the fact that he made it so professional always demanding more prize money better conditions for chess players and the fact that he introduced so many things to chess new things like fisher random chess which is uh, so popular right now and uh, the uh, yeah, clock with increment you know um this was also introduced by fisher actually um before that we had the analog clock and that had no increment basically just a 2 hour flat time control so really inspiring personality in chess who has influenced so many chess players he's a favorite player of most of us so huge congratulations on his birthday and thank you so much for watching and before i end it i hope you guys will try and play the benoni from black do have fun and let me know in the comments if you did play it and how the game went i hope you enjoy it don't forget to like the video and subscribe to my channel guys thank you bye bye